Hi there, my name is Kathy Barker from Software Solutions and this is the first of a collection of videos that I've created with regards to Microsoft SharePoint Online. I want to look at and focus on creating websites and using web parts. Now Microsoft SharePoint is for designing websites as well as doing document management which is a whole other collection of videos. But the websites that it creates are for internal use for within an organisation. And they can be either team sites where you collaborate on information or they can be communication sites where you're actually sharing information with others and communicating that to usually a wide audience. With Microsoft SharePoint open um, in my web browser, as you can see here, I can actually then simply go to the landing page, which is this button here. This little house takes me to the start page or landing page within my SharePoint. And if you're not sure how to get your SharePoint, you actually just go to your app launcher. And through your app launcher, you can actually fire up SharePoint. Okay, so when it comes to creating a new site, there's this little option here, create site. Maybe I'll just zoom in a bit so you can see better. So there's create site. So there's a little trick. Hold the control key and if you've got a mouse with a wheel, wheel forward to zoom in, which is very handy when you're designing websites and working with SharePoint, and wheel backwards to zoom out and just find that nice spot where you can actually work nicely with SharePoint. I'm going to create a site and when I create a site it's here that I mentioned earlier that you have the choice between creating a team site which is really a private space for collaborating with members of your team or whether you want to create a communication site which is engaging information and storytelling and conveying um, information to usually a wider audience. I'm actually going to go with a communication site so I click this option here. Now at this point we're going to give the site a name and I'm going to create a website about one of my favourite topics and one of my favourite topics is coffee. So I'm actually going to call this website Coffee With and if you're following me, put your first name. So I'm just going to put Kathy. Alright, now if you've actually used that site, it will actually tell you that it's unavailable. So that stops you from accidentally creating websites that have the same name. Um, because you are actually creating an HTTPS secure website where you can share this URL with other people or this address with other people and that's how they get to view your website. So you want to have a website that's unique. So I'm going coffee with Kathy and then here you can put a description. And so you can see here that I've given a bit of a description to my website so people know what they're about to see. The language I want to create this website in is English and so I'm going to click the finish button. Um, I will then have a new website that I can start modifying in SharePoint and here it is here. Now immediately I get the option to browse templates. Now I might just stash that away for now, so I'm just going to hit the X on that because I'm going to take a very structured approach to how you should design a website. But one of the important things we need to know is how do you navigate around SharePoint and around websites. So let's just go back to the fact that here it tells me I'm in SharePoint, here it takes me to the start page. Now if I go to the start page that's how I can switch between different websites that I've got. And there's my Coffee with Kathy, but I've also got other websites that I can switch to. If I go back, of course I go back to my website. Now the next thing that we should look at is the site information. And this is just the, uh, uh, the name, the description, and general information about your site. And I think that's what you should tackle first. Now up here in the top right corner is what we call a cog, and it's actually called settings. If you go into settings, you then have the option to go into site information. And it's in the site information that you can change your mind about the name of your site. You can also change the description. And if you have a hub that is a, a main central uh, SharePoint site, you can make this associated with that hub. So you will automatically appear on the navigation bar of that hub and be able to navigate to this site from that hub. I'm just going to keep this as an independent website. It's also here that you can actually delete the site. So at the end of this session, once you've followed me through these videos, you may decide that you then want to delete this practice website and you can easily do so there. So I'm just going to cancel for now, but I needed you to know that the settings option gives you site information and then I can close that as well. Now one of the dialog boxes or windows that came up earlier that we sent away was offering to apply a template to your website. 
Now, templates are a very good idea because they um, ensure that there's a consistency in the appearance and the flow and the look of your entire website. If you're going to do things manually, it becomes very time consuming and very prone to error. So I highly recommend that you actually apply a template for consistency to your SharePoint site. Now how do we do this? We go back to that cog or settings button. And here you have the option to apply a site template. So I'm going to click that. Now here's a variety of templates depending on the nature of your website. But also don't let the nature um, restrict you from choosing a look that you quite like. Now as you scroll down there's even more. And I'm going to go for this one which is called Showcase. Um, so I click this option here and I tell it I want to use that template. So definitely apply a template to your SharePoint site. So now my website looks quite different than it did before. Um, and now it's actually providing me with next steps, which I'm going to do for you, so I'll close that anyway. But that's very handy. But I think what you should do next, once you've chosen a template, is then have a look at the theme. If we go back to that settings button, so we've been in here a couple of times now, we went into site information and we went into site template. Now we're going to go into change the look. When we go to change the look, it's important that you choose a theme that you like the look of. And there's various colour schemes here. Now other things to be aware of are colour blindness issues. Um, some people are colorblind. In fact, last time I Googled it, one in um, eight or 12 percent of the male population and one in 200 women um, were colorblind. And so that means that they have difficulty seeing certain colors and predominantly they have difficulty with reds and greens. So it's good to stay in the sort of blue, yellow sort of region. So for that reason, I'm going to be very specific with the choice that I make here. And I'm going to go for a dark blue because I know that people are most likely to see that. And immediately applies it. In fact, you can just click on them to see what they look like. That's dark yellow, that's periwinkle, that's grey, that's green, purple, so on and so forth. Red. But I'm going for dark blue. So I'm going to stick with the dark blue, but what I might do is I might customise it. There's a customise option here. So I click the customise option, and what I'd like to say is that my main colour is to be yellow, and so you see that appear, because yellow and blue are a very good combination. And my accent colour, I want it to be blue. And so you can see the blue just appeared there, and the yellow appears there. I'm going to go save. So I've chosen a theme, and I've customised the colour scheme. And the other thing that I think should be tackled at this point in time is the header. Again, in the settings, go to the Change the Look option. We've dealt with the theme, now let's look at the header. Now the header is this part here at the top of your website, and in fact at the top of every page in your website. It's currently a compact look, but you can have minimal, which makes it really small. Compact makes it slightly larger. Standard makes it larger again. And extended makes it even larger again. So you choose the type that you'd like. So for this website, I'm going to stick with extended. Now I'm also going to make the header a slightly different variation of blue than the actual body of the web page. So here are different color themes you can apply to your header that work with the overall theme. So I'm going to go for this lighter blue here for my header. So I've gone with extended, I've gone with a lighter blue. Now let me have a look here. I'd like to load an image. Now one of the files that I would have sent you if you asked for the material that goes with this video is I would have sent you these pictures and I'm after image 11. And I go open and I can see my image 11 is appearing at the top of my screen. This is what we call a focal point. I can lift that up and lift that down and lift it to the right and lift it to the left and sort of sh change the focus. But I'm just going to put it straight in the middle. That's my focal point. I can change my mind about the image and I can either remove the image. Now the site title visibility is on and I also want to choose a logo so I click the change option here. It's very important to have a variety of your logos. Have a rectangular one, have a square one, 
have a small one and a slightly larger one. Um, different pages sometimes benefit from different forms of your logo. So that's part of your branding. So make sure you choose that. I'm going to choose image 10, which is my logo, and open that. And there's my logo appearing there, as opposed to my background image, and I've got the extended look. Now also I'd like a site logo, so I'm going to change this and choose my logo again. And so that's also my site logo. I can choose the logo to be in the center, to the right, or even to the left, and I'm returning it to the left. And basically I'm going to click Save, and I've done my header. And then I can click Close. So it's really important that we get into the Settings button, that we change the look, we address the theme, and we address the header. Now we're actually going to have a look at the footer as well. So let's go into Footer. Now as I scroll down, I can see my footer is at the bottom of the page. Here it is here, this yellow area. In fact, if I change the background color to brown or yellow or light blue or dark blue, you can clearly see the area it refers to. I'm actually going to go for a yellow background. Now again, I can choose to have a simple, I can even turn it off if I don't want it at all and turn it on. So sometimes um, you don't want a footer. I can have simple or extended. Um, and maybe we need to put some stuff in to see what that actually looks like. I'm going to go with extended for starters and I'm going to change my logo. And I'm going to choose image 11. And again you can change your logo. So I'm actually going to change my mind and my logo really should be the small version of my logo. It's my logo here. Now I also want to display some text and I want a copyright symbol. So I'm going to press the Windows logo key on my keyboard and the full stop. What this does, depending on your version of Windows, allows you to choose emojis and symbols. Now this one here for me is symbols. Yours might look slightly different if you're on Windows 10, but you still have symbols. And here is my copyright symbol. So I click it and it's just appeared in the background there. So I'm going to put copyright coffee with Kathy. All rights reserved. 2023. So a copyright is basically saying you are the original um, author, owner and originator of this information and should you find that somebody um, copies something from your website by having this statement on your website you may pursue copyright. So display the name, add a background colour, choose extended and set your logo and if I click save I've got this footer now appearing at the foot of my web page. Now the other thing you've got is navigation. Inside of the settings button is in the change the look option navigation and we'll get into this in a lot more detail when we start actually um, adding more pages and we've got something to navigate between. So for now I'm just going to save out of here and close out of here and I've changed the look. Now often we work on a website with others and so I may want to share this site with others just while it's in the development phase. So if I go back to my settings button I actually have site permissions and if I go into site permissions I can actually say who has full control, limited control or no control. I'm going to actually share the site first of all and choose who I want to share it with. So I'm going to share it with some of my colleagues and these are my software solutions colleagues. So I've got two here, let me grab some more. And so I've grabbed some colleagues here. Now at this point I can see that they have read um, access to this SharePoint website. But what I'm going to do is say that actually SSPC2 is read access, but SSPC5 I'm going to give them edit access. So I can hit this drop down here and I can choose edit. SSPC7, I'm going to give them full control. So they can add stuff, delete stuff, edit stuff. This person can only read and this person can make changes. SSPC6, I'm going to allow them to edit also as we collaborate on, it, on this. And I'm also going to give full control to SSPC8. I always believe that if you're designing a website that nobody should have singly full control, that there should at least be two owners, if not more, of your website. So if one person disappears or is unable to be contacted, somebody else can be contacted in their place. Now I'm going to send a message to all these people. I have given you access to my new 
coffee site. Kind regards. Oh, let me just check the spelling. There we go. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to add. And that will send a message to each of those people saying that they now have varying access to this site. Having used the share site button, I can now check with the Chevron who has full control. These three people have full control, including myself. Who are site members? These two are site members, so they can edit. And you can see the word edit underneath their name. And this one here is just a site visitor who can just read and oversee things. So this little Chevron allows us to see who has access to what. We also have this option here, change how things on the site can be shared. So site owners and members can share files, folders in the site. People with edit can share files and folders. I'm going to say no, only site owners can share files or folders in the site. Allow access requests, yes. And choose who will receive access requests to the site. The owner, Kathy, uh, will receive the request to access the site. Um, so I'm just going to accept that. I will put a little message here. So if somebody requests to access the website, I will receive a message and it will also return a custom message instantly saying that they, I have received their request and to allow me two to three days to review their request. So I'm going to save my site permissions. All right, and then I'll close that pane. So we've created a new communication site. We immediately applied a theme, a showcase theme, and that was using this option here. We also put in site information using this option here, and we changed the look which included the theme, the header, the footer, and roughly the navigation which we'll come back to. We've also set up the site permissions, and that is saying who has access to this website at this stage while it's in design, and who has full control, who has edit, and who has read rights. Now I think the next thing that's best to set yourself up ready for designing web pages is to upload the files that you're going to need on this website to the best of your ability at this point in time. To upload files, you could go to a number of places, so now it's probably a good idea to introduce you to this command bar here. At the moment, Home has got a yellow line under it, so you're currently viewing the Home page. But if you clicked on Documents, you would be viewing any documents that were currently uploaded to this website. And if you clicked on Pages, you'd be looking at any pages on this website. And there really is only one, which is the Home page and, and, and showcasing the Home page. Now these have the extension ASP, which means they're active server pages. And basically you've got a Home page. You've also got site contents where you see all the type of content, not just the pages and not just the documents, but all the content, including events um, that are part of this SharePoint website. But I'm going to go to simply documents to upload my documents. Now, when you upload the documents, it's very tempting to just chuck them all into the documents folder, but that gets very messy very quickly. So I'm asking you to organize your files into various folders. To create a new folder, click the new button and just choose folder. Give the folder a name and I'm calling the first one documentation files. And I'll go create. And there's my new folder. I need another three folders. File new and I'm just going to go logos. Okay, so using the new button, we can create as many new folders we want, and I've created four to organize my files into. Now I want to upload, using this button, files into different folders. Let's start by going into the Logos folder. So I'm inside the Logos folder. I can go back to Documents, but if I click on Logos, I've gone into Logos. If I then go to Upload, I can upload files. The files I want to upload into the Logos folder include my two logos, which is image number 3 and image number 10. So I hold the control key and choose these two files and I open. What I then see is that it's loading two items and immediately here they are here. So they didn't take very long to load. Let's go out of documents and now let's go into photos. I now want to upload some files. 
and I'm going to grab all the files, so I'll click on one and go Control A, except for the Word documents and the logo. So I'll hold the Control key and say actually exclude that one, exclude that one, exclude that, exclude that, exclude also image 3, and also exclude image 10. So I selected all of them, Control A, and held the Control key and clicked on each file I wanted to exclude, and then open those. And it is telling me that 22 items will be loaded into that Photos folder. And it's done. Now I go back to Documents. As far as the actual documentation files, if I go into here and I go Upload Files, those were the Word documents. This one, hold the Control key, this one, this one, and this one. Be careful not to Control drag or you'll duplicate the files. Hold the Control key and simply gently click on each file. If I go Open, those four Word documents will be loaded into this particular folder. So now I've uploaded all the files that I'm going to need to create my website. Again, if you forget something, you can upload them at a later date. But good practice is to try and get everything up and loaded from the outset. I want to go back to my home page, so I just click on home and I'm back on my home page.